Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Asahi Song One Colors Limited Q4 and FI24 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during this conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Vishik Mehra from TIL Advisors. Thank you and over to you, Mr. Mehra. Thank you, Nita. Uh, welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining this Q4 and FI24 earnings conference call of the Sahi Song One Colors Limited. The results and investor updates have been emailed to you and are also available on the stock exchanges. In case anyone does not have a copy of the same, please do write to us and we'll be happy to send it over to you. To take us through the results of this quarter and answer your questions, we have with us today Mr. Gokul Jayakrishna, Joint Managing Director and CEO, Mr. Arjun Jayakrishna, Executive Director, Mr. Mitesh Patel, Executive Director, Mr. Alok Jawar, Chief Financial Officer, and Mr. Sadi Joseph, Company Secretary and Compliance Officer. We'll be starting the call with a brief overview of the business and the financial performance in Q4 and FI24, which will be followed by the Q&A session. I'd like to remind you all that everything said in this call reflecting any outlook for the future, which can be construed as a forward-looking statement, must be viewed in conjunction with the uncertainties and risks that the company faces. These uncertainties and risks are included but not limited to what we've mentioned on our annual report, which you'll find on our company website. With that said, I'll now hand over the call to Mr. Gokul. Over to you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a side conference call for uh, 24 March ended quarter as well as the 24 March ended full year. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm uh, happy to finally bring some good news to, uh, to all the analysts as well as more importantly to all our investors after a long period of uh, almost four to five quarters when um, the company has not been able to do too well because of various uh, macroeconomic demand and global concerns as well as industry-specific concerns. Uh, I'm happy to report this quarter has uh, come out with a much better improved performance, and uh, uh, the coming year looks substantially better compared to the March 23 and March 24 years. I will just quickly uh, touch upon the macro numbers of turnover on a quarterly basis, for the standalone blue division as well as the consolidated division. And uh, then I will give you a general overview of the four segments. And then we'll have Arjun give uh, some update on uh, 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 some of the businesses. And then we'll open the floor for question and answers where I'll be happy to take your questions. So on the standalone basis, uh, the blue, the, the mother plant, Asai's main plant in uh, Baroda, the blue plant has started performing reasonably well. Uh, we have recorded a turnover of 83.84 crores compared to 69.94 crores uh, in the uh, previous quarter. And uh, we have recorded a uh, profit before exceptional item of 5.57 crores as compared to 1.4 crores. Uh, on a full year basis, on the standalone thing in blue business, we have recorded a turnover of 276 crores and a profit before exceptional item of 5.10 crores. This compares with a loss of 4.64 crores in the full year on the standalone basis for the blue business in 23 March. Apart from that, we had a one-time profit of 25.6 crores coming out from the sale of land, which worked out extremely profitably. So the full year numbers on a standalone basis or even on a consult basis uh, look much better than the business actually offers. So the full year profit would be 30.7 crores as compared to a loss of 4.64 crores in the previous year. This is on the standalone basis. Now I just run you through the console numbers as well. You already have looked at these numbers. I just wanted to open the call with uh, giving a perspective. And then I also uh, make a comment on what to look forward for the next year and the next quarter, because that is probably what uh, all of you would be looking forward to, because you have access to the numbers that, because they have already been published. 
But uh, again, macro numbers on a console basis, we have done a turnover of 125, 126 crores as compared to 102 crores, which is about a 20, 23% improvement over the previous quarter on a console basis. And on a console basis, profit before tax stood at 1.5 crores as compared to 1.3 uh, crores of loss in the previous quarter. So overall now, just to give a comment on how this quarter has gone by for all the four segments, uh, standalone, I already told you, has started doing reasonably well. We are back to double-digit EBITDA numbers as well and hope to uh, improve slightly on uh, this performance in the coming quarter and the year as well. Uh, on the console basis, uh, all the four uh, segments, all the four units rather, the two segments, the two units for pigments, which is Baroda and Daesh, have done slightly better than the previous year. And this quarter looks better than the quarter that I, I'm reporting right now. Uh, the Atlas segment, both the plants, the older plant has started, the old plant that we acquired, Asai acquired, has started doing better. And we are coming back to normalcy there. And the Chatral plant, uh, the intermediate section has commenced operations and they're uh, at about 50 to 55% utilization. We are in a position to a PBT break even. So this is uh, very good news for the Chatral plant because we were expecting that uh, we would probably PBT break even in about a year or year and a half of operation. While we are now looking to PBT and even PH break even maybe this quarter, which is just three months into operation. So this augurs well. We have not yet commissioned the API plant at Chitra. This plant is likely to be commissioned um, in the next month, but utilization in the API plant will take a little time to ramp up. We are in no rush because you know, we are more concerned or more concentrated or focused on uh, upping the performance of the intermediate plant because this makes us self-reliant at the order plant uh, in terms of buying our intermediate. Uh, and we hope to get completely self-reliant in the uh, current quarter, April, May, June. Uh, as in, we should not be buying stage one and stage two uh, raw materials for the main molecule pre-gabalin for the main uh, odor plant, and we should be able to get all of our supply from our chakral plant. This should augur well for the EBITDA in the coming quarter as well. And um, uh, now just a quick note uh, on, uh, you know, what to expect in this quarter. Uh, for the full year, I would still be a little cautious in giving any guidance or um, idea because uh, you are aware that a uh, lot of things are quite uncertain. But uh, the general macros for the chemical industry in general, the API and intermediate industry also seem to be improving, not just for us, but even for the industry. Uh, if we take and touch upon the main, uh, you know, uh, things that were hindering performance over the last, last five quarters. It was one, the global uh, inventory pipeline was completely choked up. This is the inventory pipeline now, I'm glad to inform everyone, is now uh, very light and free. So everybody has de-stocked and there is very little uh, inventory in the global inventory pipeline. These augurs well because now we are starting to see some orders coming in which were all because they were destocking inventory. Point two, on a macro basis, raw material prices have started to uh, bottom out, not only bottom out, but now we are seeing over the last couple of months that they are starting to inch up. This is good news because for the last four to six quarters, and, and we have reported this, and all of you are aware, that we took a lot of inventory losses because raw material and finished goods prices kept nose diving every single month for the last 12 to 16 months. Thus, we had to take non-business, the inventory carrying cost uh, risk as well, and uh, customers were unwilling to take any price, uh, you know, even to cover cost. And that's why we had a terrible uh, 12 to 16 months. This seems to be over because 
prices have now started to bottom out and even go up, and hence customers are now starting to buy ahead of time. And uh, thus, this means that we have some advantage of carrying investi- in- inventory now because we will have some profits from inventory over the next couple of quarters. We haven't seen that in the March quarter, but we are likely to probably see that in the April, May, June quarter. Uh, with that, I would uh, like to, uh, yeah, and just to comment on the EBITDA margins, I mean, uh, consolidated EBITDA margins uh, stood at, um, you know, about 2% in uh, March 23. They moved to about 4.9% in March 24 for the full year. And uh, we are hoping that we should be getting to double digits, so about 10% for the full year this year. So uh, that should be getting us back generally on a consolidated basis to decent business levels again. With that, I'll uh, let Arjun give you a few comments, and then uh, we can take questions and answers. Uh, thank you. Uh, I think as um, already has been described and discussed, I think uh, uh, generally we have had a slightly better performance than than, than earlier. And uh, uh, in, in regards to our thalocyanine blue business, I think we've covered it. There is not much for me to discuss in terms of uh, the Azo business. Um, which we have discussed in previous calls as well. Um, we have uh, made an improvement in the past. We have been doing slightly better. Uh, uh, however, not, not at the speed we would have wanted to, but quarter on quarter we have seen growth. And uh, for the full year as well, as opposed to last year, uh, we, have, we have seen uh, improved numbers. And uh, we hope that... Uh, uh, this trend continues, and while the demand has not picked up, we have gotten internally stronger. We have uh, built up a slightly, uh, you know, better uh, quality of products, slightly larger range of products, and uh, hopefully continuing this trend of month-to-month growth. And uh, we are now at around 65% utilization, so we will look to improve on this and uh, continue to do that in the in the coming quarter, which. Uh, which we have, or we, which we we foresee to see the continued growth happen um, uh, from from last year's performance, and uh, for the API as well, uh, you know, happy to take any specific questions. But overall, as already described, we have uh, made movements with the the new intermediate plan, which is up and running, and um, we are focusing on getting the right quality and right volume there, which will help us. Uh, in our internal backward uh, integration, which is the reason we put it up, and we are on, on working towards and on track to soon be opening the API facility as well. Uh, we have been uh, now uh, even audited by the local FDA, and uh, the all the things are going as per schedule and as per track with the new API plan. So happy to report them. Hopefully, we can report to you some uh, some positives. Um, on, on that in the coming few quarters as well. Thank you. So shall we open the floor for questions? Yes. Thank you very much. We'll now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star and one to ask the question. The first question is from the line of Rahul Jain from Credence Wealth Advisors. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, first question is on the blue segment, or basically, as you mentioned, ki things are improving and demand seems to be back. So, two, three parts to that. One is, in your assessment, the what segment, what geography uh, seems to be where the demand is coming back, and what is the sustainability uh, of the demand revival, if you could talk on that, and also with regards to blue uh at current levels or in the quarter gone by and plus at the current levels, 
how far the prices are away from the peak levels and what kind of volume growth we have seen in quarter 4 and for FY24 as a whole. Thank you, Rahul, for your question. Uh, I will take this question. So, Rahul, I just wanted to uh, just probably make a comment on what you said about demand. So, I should have probably uh, uh, referred to it in my introduction. The demand is actually not that strong yet. And it, I cannot claim that the demand is bad. So I clarify to answer your question, what has helped the blue business? So there were, see, there are three areas or three aspects to uh, business improving from the doldrums in which it was or the terrible times that it saw. One, as I referred in the introductory speech, is inventory pipeline, which was completely chock a block for uh, over a year, and that was a huge overhang. Um, number two is raw material prices continuing to fall like a falling knife up and down a month on month. Uh, both of these problems have been arrested. So the inventory pipeline is now clean. Interest rates peaked in the European and um, Western countries, US and all, and everybody had, uh, you know, with the higher interest rates, everybody panicked and de-stocked. At a time when demand crashed and raw material prices were falling. So it was like a perfect storm. So now we have two of the three business aspects, which is inventory pipeline is clean, and raw material prices falling has been arrested, even started to go up, which augurs very well for business going forward. The third aspect is what you are referring to and uh, what my, your question to me is on demand. So demand is not yet back in a strong way. What we are seeing right now, uh, which is causing the uh, reasonably good improvement in business, is because of the inventory pipeline drying up, a lot of people who were not buying at all have started buying. So it's not actually big. Uh, demand has improved by 20%, I would say. So it is, it's still far from normal. So if demand were to improve over the next um, a few quarters, then that should add to the improvement in business. I hope I am making this clear because uh, demand is not yet very strong. Though we are seeing improvement in uh, our prices because we are able to pass on the raw material increases or even um, improving our margins both ways into the prices that the customer are willing to accept. Because now raw material prices and finished goods prices have started going up. And then also to refer to your question, how far are we from the peak uh, pricing? Uh, we are not that far because now since prices are starting to come up, uh, you know, we must be about 20% away from the peak uh, prices of blue products. Uh, we have already prices have gone up by 20%. We were about 30, 35% lower than peak. Uh, we have recovered about 15% of that, uh, uh, you know, uh, pricing power back, partly because of increased cost and partly because of improved margin, both of which are now starting to reflect in our margins as well. Do, am I answering your question correctly, Rahul? Yes, yes, yes. And sir, volume growth for FY24 as a whole, and uh, typically, uh, again, in volume terms also, uh, what are the peak volumes and today at what volumes do we stand? Or maybe you can give a broad range or percentage terms. So uh, broadly for the full year, there hasn't been any real improvement in volume growth. The business quality has improved. The margins have improved, pricing has improved, volume growth is starting to improve from this quarter. So this quarter we have seen, uh, you know, March end quarter has seen volume growth. So for the full year, I cannot uh, claim any real volume growth. If the uh, March quarter is reflective and it looks like so far so good, and then the volume growth in 25 would be uh, seen over 24. So I would probably guide for an improved volume as well as turnover for the full year 25 as compared to 24. In 24, my volume and turnover has not improved against 23, but my numbers have improved substantially. My EBITDA margins consolidated has gone from a pathetic 2% to 4.9% in 24. And I'm hoping on a console, I'm talking about consoler, not the blue. The blue business is a little higher. But on a console basis, we moved from 2% to 4.9, and we are hoping to hit double digits this year. 
Sure. And sir, with regards to the raw materials, now the, the, double, the improvement that I am now seeing will come, will come with some volume and turnover growth as well. Okay. And sir, with regards to the prices of raw materials, you mentioned that they have been moving up. So, <laughs> some of the raw materials which where imports are there and what we have been hearing for last month or so, the problems with regards to reverse trade from China. So, is it that some of these raw materials, including say phthalic anhydride, the prices have moved up because of this reason and probably as the problem eases from China reverse trade side in a month or so, uh, will that again uh, drift downwards? So, see, we are quite uh, well insulated from this China problem that we are referring to because we are a EU and we are importing duty free. So, we are free to import telic uh, from anywhere, from, uh, you know, anywhere in the world, whether it's Thailand, Taiwan, Korea, uh, you know, uh, anywhere, and buy from the local players here. So, uh, even China for that matter. So, we are not, we are kind of insulated from that issue. However, helix prices have gone up, according to me, because, uh, again, the same situation was there with Helix, where ortho, the raw material of Helix, was at a price which was higher than the Helix prices itself. So the Helix prices, what we saw earlier, were not sustainable. And the blue prices, or for that matter, even um, the red and yellow prices, they were not sustainable. They had to go up because the raw material prices were at or you know higher than the selling prices. This has been corrected. So the telic prices are moving up more as a correction because they can't sustain business at the prices at which they were selling. So they had to raise the prices to meet their cost. Again, it is not a demand pull. It is a cost push that uh, has uh, shown improvement. The demand pull in, uh, has been there about 20-25% generally, whether it is Telic or Blue or ASOS or even for that matter API intermediate. Uh, we, if we see the demand pull coming in, which we, we will eventually, I mean, demand has to globally come back at some point, some macro indicator may change or whatever, then we will see actual improvement in uh, uh, business environment and demand. Sure. So one last question on ASO. Uh, and then I'll come back in the queue. So on the ESO side, uh, with regards to approval from some of the large uh, MNC customers, uh, two parts to that. One, we understand we had approvals from some of these large MNC customers, but probably on the pricing front, uh, those uh, comfort from our side was not there given the current prices are much lower than the normal sizes. So where do we stand in terms of that aspect as we speak? Arjun, can you take me? Yeah. Um, so I think, uh, one, I think uh, more than just the price front, I think for us, uh, since we are new, I think it's uh, about uh, following market prices and, and, you know, whatever the price may be, uh, you know, a sustainable market price is the price we have to work at. I mean, uh, so more than the price front, I think, the the whole uh, thing that we have discussed for the last more than the last year about uh, reduced demand and the large MNCs that are post COVID uh, piled up a, a pretty much uh, a very very large uh, amount of inventory is the reason they weren't buying more. So as you rightly said, we did have uh, a few uh, not not many but we had a few already approved products which they were not able to buy at that time because it, because of inventory management. So we will look to uh, start. We, we, we will look to start supplying to the MNCs now. We have started with some uh, commercial. So after approval, we'll move to commercial uh, uh, orders where they will use our product commercially and and use that in the end product and see whether the customer is okay. We've already moved to that stage for a few products with some MNCs and hopefully in the uh, uh, next quarter. Uh, uh, Q2, we would hope to see reflection of this in our ETC numbers and uh, volumes and uh, and hopefully have the MNCs volume show in by then and, uh, you know, have the that, that boost from the our large MNC customers where we have seen initial approvals happen already. Sure. Thank you so much. I have more questions. I'll come back in the queue. And all the best. Thank you. Thank you.
Next question is from the line of Ankit Gupta from Bamboo Capital Partners. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. So uh, my question was on the Azure side. You know, we have now deferred uh, the bottlenecking for our the yellow plant as well, and I think we are still uh, you know not breaking even uh, uh, in this segment. So you know, how uh, how are we? Uh, how do we see you know this uh, segment doing for us over the next two three quarters? Do you think you know we'll be able to break even in a in a quarter or two, or it will take the uh, more time for us to be given in this segment. So, Gupta, basically, the ISO business has suffered a lot in uh, for uh, the same reasons as generally what I spoke about in blue. Added to that was even a worse situation with demand. There. So, demand is still uh, remains very weak. However, we have, as Arjun already referred to it, we have made a good customer addition. So, we have added new customers to our basket. We've also made very good uh, improvements in uh, introducing new products, and our quality approvals are going quite well. So our marketing team is putting all its efforts, and because of that, we are seeing um, a reasonable improvement in the utilization finally. And uh, we should be at 65 or percent uh, in the current quarter, and uh, that means that it will be an improvement compared to the last year and the last quarter, the March and mid quarter as well. So to answer your question, over the next two or three quarters, we definitely expect to uh, break even in this segment. Once we start doing that, the prices are also now starting to improve, show improvement. As soon as some demand comes back, I think this segment should uh, turn out to be reasonably promising because we have laid uh, a pretty good uh, bit of groundwork to set it up. As far as your reference to um, de bottlenecking or expansion of the yellow line is concerned. We have just deferred it because of the terrible market conditions, and we did not want to jump the gun and add a further cost and burden to our capacity as well as finances. However, we are financially we are in a very very comfortable position with our debt equity, uh, a consolidated debt equity ratio at 0.34 times um, a debt to equity which is, uh, you know, uh, under 0.5, which is very, very conservative. And uh, now the cash flows have turned very positive as well in all the four um, plants and both the segments. This gives us a lot of encouragement uh, as we up the utilization to 70%, we will um, go back on the board to do the de bottlenecking or expansion of the line. Yeah. Pretty yeah. soon. And Okay, and you know, uh, red segment was doing pretty badly for us. You know, that continues, or we have seen uh, some uh, improvement in the red segment as well. Very good. Uh, Arjun, yeah. if you can comment on both the yellow and the red in a macro way, uh, just uh, just for your reference, we won't be talking in details uh, in terms yeah. of the numbers, but we'll give you a macro outlook. Arjun, over to you. Yeah. Uh, so, no, rightly uh, put, I think earlier we uh, were struggling a bit with red, the reason we thought that was happening was also given then, but to answer your question, uh, we, have, we have worked hard on the red, we have worked on the products, we have worked with customers and we have definitely seen a substantial improvement and uh, on a macro level I can say that, yeah, we are not... Uh, specifically struggling with the red anymore. Uh, volume wise, the yellow continues to be the larger volume, but uh, the red has started uh, to do much, much better than before. And we have a few good products that have picked up both in volumes. And also uh, we are not struggling as much with price as we were earlier with the red. So uh, uh, it, it is it is much improved from before. What will be the capacity utilization of the red as of now? As of now? Uh, so now we are at a similar capacity utilization for both the red and the yellow. So we have reached the level. The 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 plant is designed such that the red line is smaller because uh, we have a larger capacity of the yellow side. But percentage utilization is similar now both on the red and the yellow side. Yeah, sure. Mr. Gupta, to add uh, to uh, just add a comment, the uh, improvement in utilization from 65 percent to 70 percent. Uh, we are expecting it to come from the red line. This may answer your question. Yeah, so that's a significant improvement that we have seen in yeah. the red segment. Yeah. 
so my second question was on the api part you know uh, we have seen uh, some improvement in our uh, top line uh, in this quarter and you know given the sakra plant has also started the backward integration coming in how do you see next year panning out for us in terms of growth as well as on the margins front so if you can talk about that so uh, i'll take the first question on basically in terms of turnover we may not see a marked improvement because right now the intermediate plant of chatral the intermediate stage 1 and stage 2 of free gabalin that we are making there will uh, will be used by the odo plant so uh, and then we will start making the free gabalin at uh, chatral itself eventually during this financial year as soon as that happens the uh, intermediate consumption will be uh, you know will not reflect in the turnover so there may not be a vast improvement in the turnover but there will be a substantial improvement in the margin arjun you want to comment on the other part of his question what was the other part if you can just repeat it so the uh, you know the intermediate plant at chatra is operating and you know as we are and as we endeavor to uh, use the, the entire uh, intermediate requirements of for the order plant from the chatral plant from the in our capacity so how do you see the margin spending out for us for s525 in the api yeah. yeah so i think uh, uh, on a general level article uh, uh, i for uh, so i i i he's already answered it i think uh, uh, we will definitely see a uh, a uh, bottom line improvement because uh, of the intermediate facility being used and in terms of the top line we will uh, try and uh, you know uh, try and streamline our marketing and approaches as as best possible and hopefully slide it down but yeah the bottom line will be the better improved of the society as is echo what what is already been answered so will it be are we targeting let's say you know double digit uh, low double digit kind of uh, margins in our api setting for s5 yes yes we are yeah. i mean yeah. when when we look we are looking at the atlas uh, the api and the intermediate business is one business and uh, and then we look at it uh, you know we acquired this business with a beta margin of about five and a half percent um we continue to operate at about uh, that uh, level over the last uh, uh, one to one and a half years and now that is showing a substantial improvement and we sh- we are already at about eight nine percent and the with the intermediate facility what you are referring to we should uh, obviously be in double digit you know that should not be uh, yeah that should not be different can you also talk about the new product development which we are doing on the api side you know any new product that we are planning to launch in fy25 or anything else anything planned for fy26 as well arjun will yeah. uh, arjun will talk about it he is looking uh, arjun is looking after new product development at uh, the r&d center that we have at oda however uh, we we cannot for uh, 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 competition and business reasons be specific in terms of naming the product that have been uh, under research but uh, we will talk about in terms of you know uh, some of the products without naming them arjun please Yeah. So, we just talk about number of launches for FY25 and yeah, 26, yeah, yeah. and what can be the potential revenue that we are targeting from them. Yeah. So, uh, I'll I'll give a quick macro idea of what we are doing on the R&D side to answer your question. So, we have been working on uh, a, a, a good number of products, and uh, we have identified a few of these products. Uh, uh, uh things including uh, what we see our current customers buy as well as general market demand and how we foresee the uh, demand for these products to be uh, in the uh, you know coming few years so we are currently we have uh, developed and commercially launched a new product recently apart from that there are uh, there are uh, three products and one a csm that we have already developed and would be looking to commercialize in the coming months uh uh obviously you know with the api these products take time to uh, commercialize even after development so we have kept that in mind that we don't have a exact time frame you know, when we would be launching them but uh, this is this is what we have been working on apart from this we we have 
a pretty decent pipeline of products that we are working on. Uh, again, as I repeat, even different from the chemical segment here, uh, you know, there, there, uh, there are several challenges in the development of these products from the lab stage to even developing on the lab moving to the plant. So, uh, you know, we are confident in uh, a few of these products and we believe that in the next year we'll be launching launching these products for sure and uh, we are specifically looking forward to uh, three of the products which would be launched in the, the coming few months. And how big can this product be? Like, what can be the revenue potential for this product in FI20? So we are not we are not currently looking too much at the revenue potential because these are low volume, high value products. So they may not con contribute uh, in a large way to the revenue right now. What we are, I mean, I I understand what you are asking. So basically, the products that uh, our team is working on are not um, uh, you know the same five thousand, six thousand rupee. Per kilo product, but uh, higher value products, 10 to 20,000 rupees, or even um, 40 to 50,000 rupees per kilo product, some of them. So the volumes will be slow, and the reflection in the top line because of the uh, products introduced or the ones in the pipeline will not be large. However, uh, because it takes a lot of time in the API business, as Arjun already mentioned, but to commercialize them. And after commercialization, even to uh, substantially get volumes out of it, takes a bit of time. So I would not uh, rely on additional uh, turnover in terms of volumes and turnover from these launches in this financial. What I would rather, uh, it, I mean, that would come in the financial after the 25 March one. And um, the reflection of that will come more in the margins than in the top line. This year, we will concentrate more on the intermediate section and improving our EBITDA margins, which historically uh, the Atlas businesses we acquired was at 5%, 5.5%. We are looking to get it to 12%. And that should not need, uh, that should be done easily without new launching. Thank you very much, Ankit Gupta. Sorry to interrupt sure. you. Can I request to come back? Thank you. Next question is from Yohannos Vanil Desai from Total Capital Management. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so uh, my first question is uh, on the blue segment. Uh, you know, historically, uh, before the market turmoil, uh, we were doing gross margin in the range of you know 38 to 42 percent, and maybe 40 was a mid number. Uh, currently, our gross margins are still well below that number. So uh, as the market environment normalizes, uh, do we see progression towards those numbers in the FI25? Uh, that's my first question. Yes, I mean, you have studied your numbers well, so you are pretty accurate with the gross margin. That's what we were 38 odd percent, 39 percent. Uh, of course, you are referring to the blue business only. This is right. standard. Right, yeah. standard. So those are, have in this time dropped substantially, of course. We have already seen good bit of recovery uh, in this quarter itself, and that recovery should continue. And yes, our internal targets would be to get back to the 38 percent growth market. Uh, that may not happen immediately, but we are inching towards it for sure. So we are already seeing improvement in March, and we probably continue to see some improvement in June as compared to March as well, or at least maintain the market. Got it. Uh, second question is on, uh, you know, uh, as of business. So, uh, you know, globally, uh, you know, again, if we look at it, one of the larger players had filed for bankruptcy and, uh, you know, generally there was a feeling that that may have a positive rub off on the other players uh, because even though they may not be out of the business, but they may be restructuring some of their business operations. So uh, do do you actually see positive impact of that happening uh, or or maybe some negative rub-off because they may be our customer also. So how do you look at that development and are you seeing any opportunities emerging out of that development? So very, I mean, I don't want to comment too much because it's, uh, you know, related uh, parties. So I don't want to comment. Of course, the news is out in the public. Uh, I can tell you there is no negative impact uh, uh, at all on our business because of this. 
for one, uh, you were referring to the German bankruptcy. And right. we have zero, we have zero for clarification. We have zero exposure or zero business uh, with um, that entity uh, in the last five years. Nothing at okay. all. So no outstanding. Our bad debt outstanding would not be affected or impacted at all. Uh, coming to the second part of it, what would be the advantage or opportunity? There, there would obviously be good opportunities for the, uh, the other players in the segment, not only us, but generally all uh, the, the main players, the four or five um, uh, global players, including us. And um, uh, we are actively uh, approaching this opportunity in a way where we can um, you know, uh, improve our business with these opportunities. Okay, and uh, last question on API. So as we move our production from order to uh, uh, try, uh, essentially, uh, so the, the capacity there is much higher than the order. So what is the, what are we doing in terms of legwork to ensure that when we move the production and then over, let's, let's say next quarter is stabilized, uh, the market is not a problem and we are able to market much higher uh, capacity. So if you can talk a bit about that and uh, in line with that, once the capacity on the order side is empty, uh, how do we intend to fill that up? So both are very relevant questions to our business going forward. However, I'll, I'll be very honest and candid. Our concentration for this financial year, that is March 25, will probably not be on those two areas. We will be working on the, both these areas. Your question is too strong. Uh, one, uh, you know, with the capacity of API in Chatral coming into play, uh, how we see it going forward in terms of improving volume. And second, when that happens, uh, what we do with the order capacity. So both are questions which we are not going to talk much about this year because we have to do, a, we are already doing a lot of internal work on on these two questions so i would not be publicly able to comment on it and uh, financially neither of these two points will have much impact on uh, the performance this financial year so where our concentration will be there which will impact the numbers of the api business for this financial year will be one on the intermediate section which is already showing very very positive results so our concentration will and should be on that area so that we improve somebody in the earlier question. I think uh, one of the two of them, Gupta or Rahul, referred to it very well that, um, uh, you know, our margins were very low in the API business. And our first duty to our shareholders is to make sure that we have acquired this business. Yes, we have acquired it at very good value, but that is only half of the chapter. The other half is, you know, you acquire a business which is five, five and a half percent EBITDA. This isn't good. I mean, we acquired it with the idea of getting it to double-digit EBITDA. So this year we'll focus on getting it to double-digit EBITDA, which we are confident that under the strategy that we have implemented, the intermediate plan and concentration on the six main molecules of the order plan, which both Arjun and Mitesh are very actively pursuing these strategies. Uh, and uh, we should be able to get to double-digit without uh, the new a product pipeline at ODA or the API plant at Chatral. Without utilizing this, we should be double digit. Those two things are more longer term, and that definitely augurs very well because that is going to be a big strategic thing for our company. But that will take longer. I won't be in a position to answer that question sharply as of now. Okay, got it. And just one clarification. So, uh, should we assume that both CMH and RCMH? A Chatral plant have, uh, you know, at a product uh, production level stabilized. Uh, uh, is that a fair assumption to make, or we are still in the process of stabilizing one out of these products? Sorry, say that again. Both RCMH and CMH at Chatral plant, uh, you know, are, have they stabilized uh, at the production level, or we are still kind of doing the iterations there? Yeah, Arjun, can you take it? Yeah, so to answer your question, uh, the, the, we, we are now producing them and uh, they, they have stabilized. However, you know, we, uh, we cannot, I, I, I won't go as far to say that, yeah, we are, everything is set and 
you know it's good we are we are continuously looking to improve them on every aspect whether it is quality whether it is yield and we will continue to do so but to answer your question like will we are we producing it now a week on week month on month from now on, yes we are we have been producing it uh this one and we will we we are set in it we are using it internally for our pre government as well but at the same time i won't say that yeah it's, it's all set and all perfect we are continuing to improve our yield we are continuing to push ourselves and our team and uh, we are seeing improvements and we will hopefully continue to see improvements in our rcms and cms in the coming months as well uh, but yes we are producing them and it is it is going well and as for as for plan and schedule Okay. So as Arjun said, our philosophy is that continuously we should push to uh, you know improve all parameters. So we said that uh, you know the quality and the yield both have started coming out very well. This is very good news. So yes, both RCMS and CMS production is stabilized in terms of quality and yield, and uh, supply to order is nearing uh, full independence. So we will probably, as I said earlier in my introduction. Not need to buy uh, stage one and stage two three gabalin raw materials from uh, maybe in a quarter's time we'll be completely independent because Satral is already pushing out these intermediates of high very high quality comparable to the best quality and and good yield. That's why you know we are almost a year ahead of our own expectations in terms of PBT break even. Got it. Got it. Thank you. And, and uh, what was the comment earlier you made about you know the order plant and uh, the API plant? So apart from the R&D work that uh, you know our team is doing, I'm also working actively with a consultant in Bombay to kind of help us get and um, you know hone in on some of these products. And that should all go really well because I'm getting into it too. Got it. Very useful. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next question is from the line of Rupesh from Intel Sense Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, hello, sir. Uh, thank you for the opportunity and congratulations for this set of numbers in Q4. Uh, most of my questions have been asked, so I, I just have a few clarifications. Uh, so, first is uh, Clarion was acquired by Hoiba. So, considering all that, can you let me know what, is, what percentage of our revenue comes from Hoiba Group? So uh, we have been doing business with Clarion. It's a legacy business for us. It's over 20 years, probably one of our first customers. And uh, this segment business of Clarion, as you rightly refer to, was acquired by Herda. And uh, currently, if you talk about the revenues of Blue, because Blue is the only business where we have exposure there, we have zero exposure to Herda Germany or Europe, for that matter, or US, anywhere internationally. We only have exposure to Hoibet India, which was a legacy client. So, and that company is a listed company and is doing quite well. Our revenue percentage is about 5% coming out of it. Okay, okay, so thank you. Thank you for that. Second question, sorry, what is our capacity utilization in blue pigments as of today? Uh, we are at about 70% in blue. Overall. Okay, so uh, I mean, I think we did 277 crore uh, revenue in blue in FY24. Uh, uh, is, is it is it I mean, too much to expect that we will go back to less than 350 crore in FY25, given that you know realization will improve, capacity utilization will improve? Um, so uh, too, it's difficult to comment whether we'll get back to 350. It is not impossible, but will we will we be ahead of 300 or 325? Yes, we surely will be. Okay, okay. And and uh, another thing, sir, is uh, calic anhydride. I think we we have discussed. But can you also talk about our other two raw materials? One one is urea, another one is cuprous chloride. And I am second one in particular because I think copper prices have been going up significantly. So can you talk about these two raw materials? Yeah, so the basic three raw materials, silicon hydride, urea, and, uh, and, and copper, because of cuprous chloride. So pellet prices I already referred to earlier. I mean, it's a cost push thing because ortho prices are going up so globally, and pellet prices had to move up. 
and they have moved up, which is which is good because you know you can't uh, neither can direct people sustain selling at lower prices, nor can uh, nor can pigment players like us sustain it selling at the prices we used to sell earlier. Our prices have improved, telic prices have improved. Copper has been on the move, it's moved from $8,000 to $10,000, and um, that has been built into our cost as well as passed on to our customers. And as I said, uh, absorption of prices in terms of uh, uh, customers absorbing any cost increases has gone up tremendously over the two or three months. Okay, okay. how about Yuria? Yuria had a move up and now it's stabilized. It's probably just going down a bit, if at all, but uh, now it's very stable. But all of these raw material movements are part and parcel of business. We normally wouldn't worry much about it. Last one, one and a half years had become a worry because it became month on month and very sharp uh, reduction. That is a worry because that uh, creates inventory overhang which uh, you know which builds up any inventory you're holding because there's a sharp decline in the prices over the next month and qu next quarter it builds up into your loss so this is completely uh, i mean bottom now so we don't have any overhang left now even this quarter some of the overhang you know the ESO plant performance is better than what it reflects because uh, we had overhang of inventory that we had to get rid of which was higher cost inventory. But that all is seeming to come to an end. Probably in this quarter, by end of this quarter, we should generally be through with the inventory overhang in the age as well. Okay, okay. So other, other question is, uh, for March 25, can you give some view on where would our long-term borrowings and short-term borrowings would be? Yeah, so uh, that that is a simple one. Basically, our total uh, borrowings are at around 190, 195 crores. And out of this, uh, Alokbhai, can you give the exact uh, number of the long and the short? Yes, sir, just a minute. On a consolidated basis, uh, our short-term borrowings are around 124 crores and long-term borrowings are 56 crores, totaling to around uh, 197. So, exactly. 128 plus 70, so around 197 crores uh, no. standing at March so 24. As I said, as I said, 195 odd crores is our total borrowing, of which 125 is uh, short term and uh, the, the long term is very small. And when okay. we see this going, we see uh, it topping out at uh, current levels of uh, 195, uh, 200 crores. And uh, now all the four units are uh, uh, cash positive and uh, you know we, we probably will see some reduction going forward unless of course we deploy that money into further capexes which we you know small capexes may come up in um, in the pigment plant at the head as well as probably in a, a 12 month period in the atlas new plant etc but yeah we, we see them uh, uh, easily starting to come up so the, the related question to this is that the better days, I think, had gone up quite significantly in March 24. I think they're at 105 days compared to, you know, 77 and 80 in the last two years. So why why the increase? Some part can be explained by, you know, commissioning of the plants. And then how, where do you see them stabilizing? So the, uh, so the number by itself is not very reflective. What happened in the year-end number is, uh, particularly towards the year end, uh, uh, coincidentally, the number seemed higher. If you look at it right now, we are again back to below 90. So uh, it is uh, it is not that we have done anything magically. We just uh, improved it a bit. But general payment cycle is starting to improve as well. So we should uh, internally target that we should be at about uh, our long term, uh, you know, cycle again in terms of number of days. Okay, okay, sir. And then, so the last question is uh, in, in the tenants' balance sheet, there is this uh, item of 19 crore, which is right of use assets. So, can you maybe explain that a little bit? I, I think all our plants, I mean, I, I don't think we have any leasehold land or anything like that, but what is this right of use asset uh, number of 19 crore? Okay. 
this is gidc land where the plant is constructed so basically gid this land was acquired at one shot payment and we keep amortizing it every year on year in our books so these are the long term lease contracts for 99 years these are uh, accounted for as a ro assets only okay okay i see sir and then final final question sir is what what sort of uh, gross margin and ebitda margin can we expect in aso business in fy25 so we should be looking at about uh, 30% 30% gross margin yeah and and that would result into what 7 8% ebitda margin uh yeah should be about yeah Five percent this year, or seven percent, somewhere in that range. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for answering all my questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. A reminder to all the participants: you may press star and one to ask a question. Next question is from Lana Prolin Nandu from Edelweiss Family Alternatives. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah. Hi, team. Thank you for taking my question. Uh, uh, I have three questions on each of your businesses. Uh, the first question is on blue uh, while you mentioned that uh, you know we should look forward to reaching 13 14% ebitda margin in this year uh, can you help us understand from a supply side how is the situation in domestic market because what i understand is that uh, since china has put some import duty there is a lot of dumping which is happening in the domestic market especially for the blue segment blue segment and also you know if you look at your blue portfolio how much of that is price sensitive uh, or uh, let me put it other way uh, how much of that is something where a customer that we have uh, will not be able to switch from us to any other supplier that's my number one question so so the first question for Uh, I mean, uh, the product that we make is um, under a licensed technology and is a very different kind of product in the blue business. And um, hence, it's not uh, you know, it's it's not a easily replaceable product. And that's why we are uh, market leaders in this segment. That's why we are number one in the blue segment globally, and we will continue to be that um, internally, despite uh, any of the macro difficulties in the business as we have faced. over the last one to two years uh, we because we are market leaders in this segment we have been able to come out of it early and now of course coming back to normalcy uh, the second part the impact of uh, the the downturn was severe on a uh, lot of players and the china thing kind of exaggerated it it over the last one year the duty that you referred to however this is already been built in the good news is that in the blue business indian makers rule i mean globally indians are the only uh, indian makers are the only supplier for the entire global blue demand this augurs very well for generally india as a country the difficulties were on the macro business model over the last because like i said it was a perfect storm perfect tsunami kind of situation over the last one or uh, 12 to 16 months however it, most of these things Uh, including inventory overhang, uh, raw material prices falling, and the China uh, duty on the blue have all been built in. Uh, the only factor now remaining is the demand. We have seen some pickup, but not substantial. If we see substantial pickup, you will see things returning to normalcy. Sure. That, and uh, so, as we are market leaders, we should be able to take advantage of it first. no thank you for that uh, taking a leaf out of what you mentioned in terms of our leadership in blue not just as a company but as a country as well now in the past conference call you have also alluded to uh, when it comes to azo especially the yellow uh, color there to uh, since domestic uh, capacities of raw material have been coming up we are in a way uh, you know reaching uh, that kind of uh, efficiency which we have in blue segment now if i look at your overall aso numbers as per my calculation uh, while the volumes or top line has gone up uh, but when it comes to the uh, margins they are still uh, quite uh, at i mean you know substantially in a negative kind of a territory so if we were to break up this between yellow and red and the rest of the segment uh, is it 
fair to comment that in yellow, uh, maybe uh, soon we should be looking at a blue kind of uh, margins in terms of efficiency. Uh, is that a fair comment to make? So uh, two parts to it. First, uh, probably you can't compare it to uh, blue margins simply because generally it should be comparable. So your question is very fair and valid. The reason in our case, one cannot compare because in blue, we are market leaders. In ESO, simply we are not and, and we are new. So it will take us some, uh, you know, a couple of years to find our feet, which we are starting to do very well. The second part of your, so margins wise, uh, to close the first part, our margins in ESO will improve. I already referred to a number earlier, but it won't be, I mean, I, I'm talking about this year. So this year, it won't be as far with the blue margins. But yeah, for a long term, there is obviously an opportunity to get it at par with the blue margin. Generally, the margins of both uh, the uh, blues, reds, and yellow should be similar. So, you know, I'm, I spoke very clearly and specifically about our situation because we are market leaders in blue. So that business is easier for us. There is legacy businesses, and we have a fantastic customer base also, which is not easy to replace because of the technology that we have. Um, as far as, uh, you know, you, you said about uh, utilization, you asked the second part of the question? No, I was more talking about in terms of backward integration, in terms of raw material so, getting. So, uh, you know, what has happened is with the supply of raw materials coming out of India, things have become much easier now for Indian makers, and this will continue. So the, what the overhang we are, now I got it you refer to why our margins have not improved despite volumes. So the answer for that is very specific and very clear. Uh, I, so basically the uh, raw material prices kept dropping and the demand was very weak. So we continued to hold very heavy inventory in both the blue as well as the ESO business, uh, which continued to reflect losses in the quarter, in the next quarter. This has happened in this quarter as well for the ESO business. So we had to sell some inventory of finished products which were at a higher cost. But we had to sell it at the current market prices. And hence, we had to take that kind of a inventory loss, which is actually not a business loss. So your question is absolutely valid. Despite improvement in um, the volumes and turnover, we haven't seen improvement in the bottom line Precisely because of only one and simple reason, because of inventory overhang of higher cost inventory. This is more or less over, but not totally over. By end of June, July, I think we expect, our team expects that inventory overhang will be completely over. For the blue, this inventory overhang got over sometime in January, February. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, sorry. So just, just to, uh, just some double clicking on this, right? Uh, you know, in this business, we have a tie up with a, a, a global uh, kind of a, a, a company. So how much of that tie up has, you know, you know help us in terms of technology? And uh, I mean, in terms of getting uh, the approval for getting uh, that inroads into some of these MNC customers. So uh, has it reduced the kind of time that we would have required to the kind of efficiencies that we have reached today in yellow uh, and also has it made it easier for us to probably target some of these MNC customers. If you can just help me uh, to understand the advantages of this JV, uh, that would be very helpful and how will you evaluate, right, your foray into ASO, that would also be very helpful. So uh, first, you know, our, our partner, Canon of UK, is a fantastic JV partner. So, you know, I have a lot to thank them for. Uh, they work very closely, both Asahi and Tenant have worked very closely on this project. And uh, yes, they have uh, done their best to help us with technically on some of the products, and some of it is uh, uh, working out quite well. The, the product requirement that they demand is very high quality product, and uh, they have a very uh, high quality standard internally, which should all go well long term because once it is through their technical uh, filter, it probably should be good for more or less uh, anyone globally. So that is the good part of it. Uh, I mean, from the demand point of view, 
the offtake that uh, tenants would do from the products that we make has not been as much as both of us had expected because of globally weak demand. So, I mean, but, but that's improving now and we are working closely and that uh, tenants business is also starting to pick up. But overall, great experience working with tenants. We are happy with them. They are happy with us. And the opportunity for this business going forward should be very, very bright. Very encouraging to hear that, uh, Gokul. Just one last point on API. Uh, if I uh, under, I mean, if you can help us, uh, what is the price and demand of our end product, that is Paragabin? And also, uh, if I understand it correctly, will the realization per kg of n minus one, n minus two, be higher than a realization per kg of Paragabin? Is my understanding correct there? Once you sell it outside, once you are once you have consumed it for in-house consumption, the additional uh, or the excess n minus one, n minus two, when it is sold outside, will it be uh, giving us higher realization than our core product? I don't get it. What do you mean by higher realization than Kigablin? No, I mean the price of n minus one. So RCMH and CMH, n minus one and n minus right. two. If we were to sell it outside would be at market prices. Our products are coming up uh, quality-wise very well, both RCMH and So we should have no difficulty to sell those products because we are at par with the top uh, suppliers of RC, uh, RCMH in India or CMH in India. So no difficulties on the quality side. I, I didn't get it exactly what you mean higher than, if no. the price won't be higher than three gabalin, of course. No, in terms of per kg, uh, right? I mean, would it be lower or higher than free capital in terms of per kg right. realization? Uh, Mitesh, can you take this question? So simply, our margins uh, will improve because of CMH and RCMH. So uh, uh, the margins are almost the same as Prega uh, uh, which we are getting right now. Sure, sure. I get your point. And just lastly, on the pre gabbling demand and price trend, if you can help us, that would be great. Thank you for uh, answering all the questions. So pre gabbling I think the prices have uh, been going down like everything else over the last 12 to 16 months. This price decrease has been arrested and prices are stable now. So we are expecting uh, some improvement in the prices. But uh, we would probably expect improvement in volume coming ahead of uh, improvement in prices. And hence, uh, uh, and with the N minus one, N minus two out of Chatral, the margin improvement should uh, come in very quickly and substantially. Thank you, team, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. As there are no further questions, I will now hand the conference over to Mr. Gokul Jay Krishna for closing comments. So uh, thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for, for attending the uh, conference call today. It was, uh, it was a pleasure interacting with all of you and your valuable questions, uh, you know, were, were very useful for not only us internally, but also for analysts and investors uh, to give a perspective of the business. It was, uh, it was a pleasure to interact after a while and report some good numbers and the science in the market and generally macro environment seem very encouraging. Uh, as we know, with the, uh, uh, the, uh, the the results for the election in India out, uh, we may be looking at um, uh, uh, a very, very positive uh, majority for BJP and NDA, and this would also augur very well over the next five years for uh, generally demand within India. And uh, we are well placed to take advantage of that as well as uh, uh, global demand. Global demand is likely to come back and come back strongly, I think, in the year 2025 calendar after the U.S. elections in November, where I expect that uh, most likely and hopefully Trump will triumph and uh, we will have uh, an end to the Ukraine war, which I hope uh, by early next year and global demand, particularly out of Europe, should surprise on the positive side. This also augurs very well for our business and our company. And um, with the API, as I said, uh, we are working at the R&D center and with uh, a consultant uh, um, help as well to hone in on new products and new chemistries 
to ramp up uh, our uh, top line in that business over the next three years. And as a group, that uh, makes it very encouraging. Um, thank you to all my shareholders who have stayed with the company for uh, this difficult period, which we are now, uh, which is now coming to an end or already started improving. And uh, also to my my whole team, my employees, and all of our, all of our team who has put in tremendous effort over this difficult period, and now they are in a position to strengthen the company over the next year or two. The young team that uh, we are building at Asahi is uh, getting stronger by the quarter, and this should all go well for our future as well. Thank you all for attending. Thank you very much. On behalf of Asahi One Colors Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your Thank, Thank you. you.